I was traveling in Kenya and I met two farmers at random. One farmer was yielding two tons of food on an acre and her family was thriving and her next door neighbor was yielding four times less food. And I became just very intrigued by what is the difference between these two farmers. How is it possible that one could be doing so well while her neighbor is doing so badly? And it was extraordinarily simple. It was a little bit of seed, fertilizer, spacing your plants. And so very naively, I took 40 families together with some Kenyan colleagues, provide them with some extremely simple training, and we loaned them seed and fertilizer. And extraordinarily, those farmers had the best harvest of their lives. They doubled their farm income. And the majority of the world's poor people are farmers. So when we build farmer productivity, we build income for a lot of really poor people, and I think that this is potentially one of the most cost-effective ways to end poverty in the world today. There are two vastly different perspectives in the world about farming and agricultural development, and the predominant view is informed by people living in huge cities. But there's a completely different perspective. Our organization is headquartered in rural areas where we can learn directly from farmers. We've come across with so many different perspectives on how agricultural development should be done. It's not about inventing more agricultural technology. The technologies we needed were invented a century ago. It's about distributing those technologies and getting them into people's hands. One Acre Fund draws on learnings from many different NGOs, but what makes us pretty successful is a combination of services that we provide to farmers. So farm inputs create the potential for big gains in yield, but without delivery, these are basically inaccessible. Without financing, farmers can't afford them and without training, they don't use them properly. And so all we've done is really combined some very simple activities that we've learned from other organizations and put them together into one package. And all of a sudden, it makes it possible for the farmer to succeed. <laughs> Every farmer that we serve pays us for the services they receive. If I'm an aid recipient, I have to take whatever is given to me, and I have to smile and accept that. But if I'm someone that pays for services, I become a customer all of a sudden. And, you know, as the saying goes, I become the king. And so what we find in our organization is that sometimes we roll out a new product or a service and nobody buys it. And that's a great indicator that we have not satisfied our customer's need. Sub-Saharan Africa is currently a food importer, um, but Sub-Saharan Africa has the capacity to become the breadbasket of the globe. Once we can make the delivery possible, the training possible, the financing, then Sub-Saharan Africa can join the rest of the world in having increased yields and eradicating poverty at a mass scale. And then we would be all out of jobs. It'd be great.